Well, hello to you from Sydney, Ohio. Um, hey, I like to usually be upbeat with you guys, you know. Um, but I also want to be real with you. Uh, I'm going to make this relatively quick, I hope. I always say that, or don't I write relatively quick? I mean, you guys see a 25 to hour minute or 60 minute video. Um, I'm worn out. Oh, shoot. Sorry. This microphone. I know when I record on my Mac, the sound is weird. I'm trying to resolve that. I'm sorry if that bothers you guys. Um, it's just a microphone on the Mac. It's not a. It's not a very good setup. Um, I'm watching my little tape job here, and I'm hoping it holds together. Um, anyways, I just. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm. I'm. I'm worn out and I'm tired. Um, if you didn't see my last video, you're going to need to see that video because none of this is really going to make a lot of sense to you unless you watch the previous one about how um, God used the, the police department to basically save my motel room. Um, a lot has transpired since then. Um, I mean, Monday was a relatively quiet day. Um, but I was stuck here. I, I couldn't leave because um, they I don't have a key. They won't remagnetize my key. Um, then they shut the AC off. So I just kind of sit and sweltered in here. But I actually have been working on a, a business plan for a new business I plan to open up. I'm, I, I'm trying really hard just to get my life back to some normalcy. Um, it's just been such a whirlwind for these past two, three years. Um, I'm just trying to seek some kind of normalcy in life again. I'm so sorry about this. This thing is just not cooperating with me. Oh, the sound isn't good. I tried, guys. Um, I tried my hardest. So, um, yeah, so I've been working on a business plan. I got a very good friend in Wisconsin who's been an absolute blessing in my life. Very smart, very intelligent individual. Um, he's helped me. He's prayed with me. He's been at my side. You know who you are. Thank you. You've been a good friend. And I've had many friends here on Facebook step up, uh, encouraging me, helping me in any way that they can. And I, I, you need to know that I don't think I would be able to ride this out without you guys. Uh, your support has meant the world to me. And I God has used all of you who have commented and posted and reached out to me, texted me, called me. My wife shut my cell phone off. It was part of the rotten divorce case that's going on. I may have to, whatever, I, I got to be careful what I say because there, she has an order against me. Um, I'll probably have to cut this out. In any case, um, today I, I ran out of food. I mean, I, I had some food, you know, stored up here, some hot dogs and some chicken and cans of vegetables. And uh, between me and my friend in the motel here, we, it's, we ate it all. And his dog, um, it's gone. So I had a few bucks um, and I had a small check of my remaining check that I picked up from my last employer. My one, that's been another complicated story, but I had a very small check left over from a previous employer. It was enough to go get some food from Walmart. I went to get my check, cashed it. Um, I knew that I couldn't leave my room unlocked because if I left it unlocked, well, my, my computer and stuff is here, and I knew they would mess with me if I left. So my friend from up the hallway, he came and stayed in my room while I left. And uh, I cashed the check right across the street, um, and I came back to the motel to check up on him before I went to Walmart, just because I was suspicious, you know, I'm, I was worried about him. And I pulled up, and I noticed my window to my motel room was closed, and that kind of gave me a sinking feeling in my stomach. And I walked in, the door was, the door was shut, um, knocked on the door, figuring, hoping Mark was still in here, no answer. 
I went up the hallway to his room, knocked on his door, he opened the door, I said, what happened? And he said, five minutes after you left, they broke in the door and told him to get the F out of my room and they locked my room up. And so you're wondering why and how in the world, Jim, after that, are you sitting in your room right now shooting a video? Well, the magic behind that is the night manager here has a very tender heart towards me and he feels horrible. He, he has to do his job. He has to be a jerk to me when he has to. Um, but at the same time, the guy, is, he sees what's happening and, he, and it's killing him. And uh, I came here to check on Mark. I knew my room was locked up, but I want to check on Mark and I want to get him some food. He's broke, um, and I've been trying to help him. Um, pray for Mark. God put him in my life for a reason, and uh, pray for him. He's a, he's a good man, um, and he, he, I, I just I suspect God's going to do some great things with him. That's all I can tell you. Pray for Mark. Um, I love him. He's he's a good man. He's been good to me. He's been a good friend. Um, He's the guy with the husky, Tiana, cute dog. She's been a blessing too. Um, she senses like when I'm when I'm down, and she just—it's weird how an animal can pick up on that, you know. And she comes over and tries to like nudge on me, and I can tell she's concerned. Um, so uh, in any case. Um, when I came back, the night manager was standing outside and he just said, Jim, come here, I gotta talk to you. And uh, he said, I'm risking my job to do this. He said, if you can promise me you can have your stuff out by morning, I'll open your door. And um, yeah, I mean, at this point, um, I, I, took, I took it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean I, I have to stop um, my concerns with, in regards to the back of this motel, the Super 8. And I'm just going to say it, there's sex trafficking going on in, in that back motel. And God put me right in the middle of it. I wasn't trying to start nothing. Manager came after me. The general manager came after me, attacked me verbally. You know, flashlight shining my I think I, in my last video I explained it. And... Uh, He's been doing everything he can to manipulate me to shut me down. That's why he's doing all the stuff with my room. He's just, he wants me out of here. I don't know, somehow I think he's deceived into thinking that me being out of here is going to make all of his problems go away. <coughs> so as part of my trips, like, I forget where this all planned out, but I, I went to another ex-employer, the one that I worked for last week, for a brief period, I mean, I, I, I resolved some problems for him. He need, he desperately needed my help, and he was willing to pay for it. At least he said he was. I went there to pick up my tools um, and to, you know, notify him that I, I mean, I'm expecting to get it paid. Long story, long story short, he said, you ain't getting an effing dime, Jim. I said, oh, great. Okay, that's good to know. I, I like there was two nights I worked almost the entire night through the night to help him out to try to get this um, he's got a structural steel contract for uh, a large well I don't know if it's a lot well pretty good sized college a state job that they're building and it was getting way behind and they were gonna get fined four thousand dollars a day if they couldn't get stuff on time he hired me to come in and get his operation running is quickly as I could, smoothly as I could, to try to make these deadlines. And then uh, when it came time to pay me, he basically told me to go pound sand. Um, and then I made it. I made him aware of the fact because he actually was a client in the back building. And uh, I know because he told me the stories. Uh, little did I know how I was going to get implicated into, into all this. Then I just made him aware that you should know that. Be prepared. There's probably going to be a detective coming your way to speak with you. And he instantly turned furious against me, grabbed a forklift, blocked the entrance or the exit out of the out of the yard, and called the sheriff. 
and the sheriff came actually three three cars three sheriff cars came and four sheriff's uh deputies four you know, at least four four or five of them two of them came to talk to me and uh they were cool like they asked me some questions they're like you did not know you didn't do nothing wrong jim like you know, we're, we're kind of wondering why this guy called, you know, if he wanted you off his property so bad, then why did he block the entrance with a forklift? Um, didn't make sense to them. And I told him, basically, he's scared because he's afraid he's going to get busted for the services that he paid for. Um, and, and I'm just going to tell you, I mean... What happened back there is he paid for services. He was given some drugs. Those drugs affected his mind. They took every bit of cash out of his wallet. And the next morning he woke up and blamed his own employees. Um, this is, I, I cannot believe what's happening. And you're probably not going to either. And I want you to understand if you just cannot swallow this, I get it because it's been difficult for me to swallow. But the thing that I've come to learn is that you give your heart and your life to Christ completely, like willing to follow him anywhere, life will get strange for you. It has for me. Um, and I've even had good, strong, faithful brothers. And it's only been brothers. I haven't had any sisters say any weird things, but I've had some some brothers who I consider mature in Christ who literally almost attacked me um, and, and tried to make me feel like I, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing and I, I'm i doing what God wants me to do and I really don't care what anybody else thinks. I mean, I, 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 I have a very close relationship with God right now and it's been that way for the, last, the past couple of years. Um... Well, for certain, no, I want to say probably the past almost two years, for sure a year and a half. Um, and in that year and a half, some of the worst things in life have happened to me. Um, I have not seen my wife or my kids for 16 months. Um, I'm sorry that this is just going to be a hard video to get through. Um, but I, I, I just, I told you I'm going to share my life with you and I'm sharing all the, even the ugly stuff. I still plan on teaching the book of James. I mean, I, I've been working on that, but I also have some other news that I need you to pray about is it may affect my ability to teach that book. Um, so in any case, uh, that's that's where I landed today. I got half of my stuff out of here already. I took it to a, my boss's shop, my my old boss's shop. He, I call him up. He's totally cool. He's like, I'll help you any way I can, Jim. There's there's spots. There's a spot in the back shop. You can, you know, put your stuff there if you can't fit it all in your van. So by like early morning tomorrow, I need to finish cleaning out the rest of my room, packing my van tonight. It's storming outside, which has kind of been refreshing because it's bringing bring cool air in the room. It's, my AC is still shut off. Um, but um, I got to get packed up. And I, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know where I'm going. I, I don't really, I mean, I've got maybe 30 bucks to my name right now. Um, I got a boss who owes me nearly a thousand dollars who won't pay me. Um, and so I, I'm just going to be honest with you when I'm finished with this video, I'm going to try to figure out how to start a Facebook. Um, I, I don't know what they call it. Uh, a mar uh, I don't know. Fundraiser or something who, I don't know what it's called, but I'm desperate. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, and here's the deal with that fundraiser, if I can figure it out. If you don't have 100% faith in what's going on, if you don't believe in, in, if you have doubts about me, don't give. Do not give. If God has convinced you what I'm telling you is true, although it seems very far-fetched, 
if, if you're coming to the conclusion that Jim is an honest man and he's not playing games, um, he's being honest, he's being real, this stuff is really happening to him, um, and if you feel moved to give, give. But if you do not have faith to give, I don't want you to give. Uh, I don't want any money unless it's coming straight from God. If there's anybody that wants to help and it's by faith and you are 100% convinced it's the right thing for you to do, then give as as you can. Um, I, I just, I got to get a place and I have no money. Um, but do not give unless you have full faith. Don't do it. I don't want it. Um, so in any case... Tomorrow I have to go see my probation officer and I currently have a 14 page grievance filed against him because there's, uh, there's a lot. I'm just going to tell you, and if you know anybody in your life who's been to jail, they're probably going to tell you the same thing. There is a lot of corruption in the criminal justice system. A lot. And particularly what I've heard in Ohio is one of the worst states um, for corruption in the criminal justice system. A gentleman that I know um, who's a Christian, strong believer, I, I don't, he's had some interest in this whole concept of, uh, I mean, he has a prison ministry, a jail ministry, um, but he told me that the state of Ohio, every time they put somebody in jail, gets $28,000 from the federal government. Um and if that's the case, that's a pretty good motivating factor for putting people in jail. So my probation officer, I do not trust at all. I'm going to try to figure out how to put a link on my Facebook page to the 14-page grievance I filed against them. And that's all I'm going to, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to bash him too much on camera here. You just need to know there's corruption in the system. Uh, it has a purpose. And I believe if you read my 14-page grievance, you'll see kind of, as you go through it, you're going to see what I believe is the, the core of the corruption. But um, I'm going to try my best to, to get it maybe uploaded to Google Docs or something and then give you a link on Facebook. So you can read the 14-page grievance I have against him. After filing that grievance, I think it was within three or four days, I heard a loud bang on the door. They were here to search me, search my room, and search my vehicle, probation department. Threats. It's another threat. I mean, they're doing everything in their power to shut me down. And uh, I need you to pray. There, There is corruption, and you need to believe it. The George Floyd thing, yeah, that stuff really happens. It's real. There are men who are cops and probation officers and correctional officers in, in, in jails that do not belong in that position because they do not know how to handle authority. Um, and they use it as a tool of abuse. Um, and it's real. And if, if you have ever been in a system or you know somebody who has, you let them watch this video. And I guarantee you, you're going to hear that you're going to see their head going, yup, been there. He's talking the truth. There's a country is full of corruption. Um, so I'll do that. Uh, you need to know that tomorrow I'm, I'm one of the reasons I'm somber tonight is I don't trust him. And I have a, I have a suspicion he's trying everything he can to do to put me back in jail, to shut me down. Um, so a certain someone can finish what their job is in my life. Um, that sounded a little bit bitter. I apologize. I'm not really, well... I'm not really bitter about it, but it hurts a lot daily. Um, I miss my children. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if I need to take anywhere else here. Um, just pray for me. I mean, if I can, if I can, if I can be driving back on the freeway in this direction tomorrow, I'll be a happy man, and I can move forward with my passion for getting this new business going, trying to find some stability in life again. Um, I'm excited about the business. Um, I, I have full intentions on just starting this business completely dependent on God. I don't have money to do it, but my good friend uh, has been working with me and 
praying with me. I sorry, my screen went blank. I thought I lost you. And uh, I, I I just feel this is something God's up God's doing, you know. Um, and I'll uh, as soon as I know that I'm got some things figured out in life here, I'll expose to you what the business idea is and um, what my what I'm hoping like my next year of life is going to look like. Um, but certainly it's going to be dedicated to getting you guys, teaching you the word through this channel um, and encouraging others to come to Christ as well. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'll do my best to get that stuff linked up. I don't know if there's anything I want to tell you. Just not knowing if I'll be able to see you for a while. Um, and I'm being very sincere about it. it it's, the system is so corrupt, I have no faith. I've done nothing wrong, but there's so much corruption, I don't trust it. And now that, you know, I filed a 14-page grievance, and then I filed a grievance when they searched my room because they didn't, they never stated the grounds for it. And according to their own paperwork, they have to give you grounds to search. And it has to be um, that you are either about to commit a violation, or a violation of probation, or you already have committed one. And I didn't either. So I, I, I fired off another email saying what were the grounds and what was the probation violation I was about to commit or had already committed. And nobody will respond to me. Nobody sends me an email back. Why? Good question. But all of this information, everything is already in the pers already in the hands of a third party. And I've already given them a very detailed list of what to do if I go to jail. Um, in order to protect myself um, from corruption. And I know it's going to be hard for you guys to hear. I, I, I totally get it. It's hard to like, it sounds like conspiracy theory, Jim. And I get it. I mean, if you're thinking that, I understand. Because I have been shocked, absolutely shocked, and really dismayed by how corrupt things really are. It would make you sick. I'm ashamed that our country's come to this. Um, so, pray for me. I, I'm, I, I, that's, I feel like I'm being selfish here. But um, pray for me that I don't go to jail. That God sends his um, army of angels to protect me. Um, because I, I, I'm excited to get into the book of James with you guys. I mean, I'm excited to teach you through that book. And... and that, that we can learn and grow together, you know. I mean, that's what God wants for us, you know. We loving up on each other and using our gifts on each other and um, taking care of each other like brothers and sisters should. Um, so that's where I'm just going to leave it tonight. I mean, this is long enough. I'm tired. I'm worn out. Um, being honest about it, like there's all these different angles of pressures, um, and they're relentless. This week, since Friday night, it's been really hard. Um, I, I haven't given up faith, for sure. I mean, I, I still fully trust God, but I'm physically worn out. Um, and these issues are intense. I mean, I don't, I don't go anywhere without watching my back right now. Um, so, hopefully next video is real soon. And it's not 135 days from now. Um, cause that's what I got hanging over my head. And, and I know that there's a probation officer that, that would love to see me back in jail. He would love it. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to me. And once again, I'm going to try to put that, I'm broke. I, I, I thought I had that thousand bucks coming in and I don't. Um, and there's no quick resolution to that. I mean, that would take suing him to get my money. So that's where things are at. Thank you so much. I'll try to get the, I don't know, I'm probably repeating myself because I'm so darn tired. I'll try to get that fundraiser thing going once again. If, if you don't fully believe in what's going on here, if you don't think that this is God doing things on this earth, don't give to me. I don't want the money. Um, but if you are like, if you're sensing through God's spirit, like, no, Jim is, I'll be honest, there is corruption. I mean, all these things, although they may seem strange, there's facts to it all, and it's real. 
um, and God moves you to give, then I would appreciate the help. At least to get me by until I can get back on my feet here, you know, and I'm, I'm whatever. Um, but thank you guys for your support. Thank, thank you for all who've, I mean, people have, I mean, it's hard to keep up with Facebook Messenger. You guys have been awesome. And uh, to know that you're praying for me means a lot. It's a very difficult period of time in life for me. And I just want to thank you for being a friend to me and supporting me and um, loving up on me because many have turned their backs on me. Um, and I have suffered a lot of betrayal. Um, so thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Well, I hope that was a help to you in some way. If you're interested, you can subscribe to my channel here. You can see one of my latest video posts. Or you can see what I used to do for a living. Thank you. Bye.